Okay. Guys, we were doing this video game console tier list. We watched Asmin do this? Yeah, that's who I stole it from. Because we're doing Boomer Month, and I was like, oh, this is actually great for Boomer Month. So I saw Asmin do this, like, this is great. Let's do it. We're gonna do this too. There's been a lot of very, very good consoles. And how consoles have evolved over the years is very, very interesting to me. Why? Because I think there was a time where we had a period of time, kind of like a golden age of consoles, where games were innovative, consoles were doing new things, there was a lot of advancement. Let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna go ahead and go, and the way that I'm going to rank these off of what the console was for its time, right? Obviously, you could look at the NES and you compare an, an original Nintendo, you can compare that to a freaking PS5 coming out, and obviously the PS5 is better. But it's not necessarily about that, it's about where the system was at its time. What is this? Is this a DS? This is a 3DS and this is a DS, right? Well, let's start with this one. The Sega Dreamcast was, in my opinion, the most ambitious, cutting edge, impressive system for its time. Everything about the Dreamcast blew every other console at the time out of the water. It had online play, four controller ports built in, no multi-tap or anything like that, four controller ports built in. The graphics were awesome at the time. It had good peripherals, right, where you could play different things. Sega, in its prime, was on the cutting edge of everything. The memory card having a, a, a screen on it and you having like visual stuff on the memory card that you inserted in the thing. The controller was a little bit weird, but once you got used to the controller, it was actually really good. And I always thought the original Xbox controller actually tried to model itself after the Dreamcast. I always thought that. Like it just, it, it was very similar, but the problem with the original Xbox controller, it was way too big. It was, it was hard to hit the buttons. It was way too big, right? I, you can see the similarities here, right? D-pad, analog stick, you have the buttons. They added an extra analog stick, but it's kind of the similar shape except too big. I think the Dreamcast was awesome, and I, I would put this S tier. The problem with the Dreamcast was that it was too good for its time. Whenever you guys think of Dreamcast, correct me if I'm wrong, do you guys feel that way? You put Dreamcast in the same tier as PS2 and Xbox, as far as like the release time frame? Because every time I talk to people about this, they're like, oh yeah, I thought that came out at the same time. The Dreamcast was like with the N64. It was a little bit later, right? But it's like N64, PlayStation 1. And really, PS2, Xbox, and all them, they were playing catch up to the Dreamcast whenever the PS2 and, and Xbox came out after 2000. I always remember there not being enough games for it. Like they had Sonic and that was pretty much it. And they, they had some other stuff like Sega specific, like Sega Bass Fishing, which was an awesome game. And they had a lot of like arcade style of games on the Dreamcast, which is cool, but there really wasn't enough games. And that's, that's something that I think was an issue for the Dreamcast. Let's start with the DS. I think the DS was Nintendo's first step into, we gotta change some stuff up. Cause you had the Game Boy, then you had the Game Boy Pocket, and then you had the Game Boy Color, and then you had Game Boy Advance, DS, and then the 3DS. Oh, Advance SP, Game Boy Advance SP, I remember that one. At first it was cool. The first Game Boy was huge, like physically big. Game Boy Pocket, they reduced the size quite a bit. That's what I had, I had a Game Boy Pocket. And then I got a Game Boy Color. I remember I had a black Game Boy Pocket, and then I, had a, I got a green Game Boy Color, like a neon green Game Boy Color. So the Game Boy Pocket was like a good idea, but a bad idea because it essentially just like cannibalized its own market. It's like an updated version of the Game Boy and nobody was really gonna buy that if they already had a Game Boy. Actually, I'm gonna do this in reverse order. I think the original Game Boy was so impressive because it was the first handheld, big time handheld console. I don't know if there was anything before that that was like a little like dinky, like rinky dink, whatever, but the Game Boy was so advanced at the time, it was amazing. Cause people could go and you're taking the kids on a trip, going around, you're on the go. People are sitting there waiting on the bus. They're playing Game Boy on the bus. People are sitting in the parking lot waiting for their parents. I think that the Game Boy was really, really good. Even though it was very innovative, this is a hard one. Cause I think that the original Game Boy and its popularity is what kicked off. I mean, it is, it is what kicked off handhelds, but how many really good games were there for the Game Boy? I can't think of a lot of really good games. The Pokemon games, the Zelda games were very popular. Mega Man was popular on the Game Boy. Earthworm Jim was popular. I remember that one. There probably were, I mean, that was around the time where RPGs were like super popular too. 
and I mean, e even stuff like Pokemon, right? Trying to decide between it being an S or an A. What would you guys say made Nintendo? If you were to, if you were to ask me, I would probably say the Super Nintendo made Nintendo. The NES was good, but I think the Super Nintendo was like, oh, that made, like that like solidified Nintendo. But the Game Boy, okay, Game Boy's an S. You know why? The Game Boy came in and planted the flag for Nintendo in a market that this many years later has not only Nintendo been the best at it consistently, it's turned into their main product with the Switch now. I think the Game Boy, to, to be able to come in and drop it on the table and be that good for that long, it all started with this. So I will say the Game Boy is S. Now, here's my issue here. You have the Game Boy Color, which is really a Game Boy, but better because it has colors and it's a little bit smaller and it was a little bit more ergonomic. You remember the shape? By all metrics of, of like hardware, whatever, the Game Boy is better than, the Game Boy Color is better than the original Game Boy, but it didn't really change anything. It didn't really make anything better as far as the games. And my original thought was maybe Game Boy would be an A and the Game Boy Color is S because it's a, just a better version of the original. But it didn't really change anything. But the games are the same, which in some ways is also very impressive because this was now the first console that had backwards compatibility. And they had the same cartridges and the same games for multiple consoles. I think from a hardware perspective, and there, it, it is better than the original Game Boy, but it wasn't as come in, drop it on the table, boom, this is innovative. Do I remember this right? I believe the Game Boy Advance also, you could play your original games on the Game Boy Advance. Is that right? It was select B plus A, a direction. Yeah, 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 I think it was something like that. I don't remember what it was. Nintendo really like set the standard for that. But because of backwards compatibility and all that stuff, I'm gonna give it an A. It's still very good. Dreamcast S, no shot. Dude, I'm telling you, the Dreamcast was way ahead of its time and it set the standard for every console moving forward. The Dreamcast set the standard for every single console moving forward, every single one. I think the Game Boy Advance was good. It was a good system and there were some cool games like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Oh, that's another thing. The Game Boy Advance was the first one that, just like they had been recycling their consoles, they started recycling their games. It needed a second version, which was the SP, to really like bring it together. Months. I would probably S give this between a C or a B, a, a B minus if I could. Because I had one of these, and I remember like, not have, I don't even remember why. I don't ever remember it being an issue on my Game Boy Color, but I remember it being an issue on my Game Boy Advance where like I felt like I couldn't ever see. Am I crazy for remembering it this way? Now, the 3DS, the DS, excuse me. The DS was basically the Game Boy Advance SP version two. It was the flip. That was the same time like flip phones and stuff were very popular. And what they were doing here was they were going, they were like, this Game Boy Advance SP is doing really well. This is popular, this is great. What if we expanded this? And what if one of these was a touchscreen? What if one of these was a touchscreen? And this is something that Nintendo has done time and time again, where especially back in the day, they would come in and they would introduce something super cool and they focused on fun. They made everybody else stop and turn and look. Like, oh wait, what are they doing? At that point, Game Boy and Nintendo had come in and, and it was theirs. Nintendo DS release date was 2004. Do you guys remember touchscreen phones? When touchscreen phones became a thing? I think it was like 2000, I, I was thinking it was like 2008. I guess the original iPhone came out in 2007. I just Googled it, January 9th, 2007. So three years prior is whenever the Nintendo DS came out. The Nintendo DS and its touchscreen and all that, the stylus, all that stuff, three years before the first iPhone. iPod Touch, oh yeah, iPod Touch was before the iPhone, that's right. iPod Touch release date. First generation release date. Oh, that was actually 2001. I'm wrong about that. I guess I was only thinking about phones and I really wasn't thinking about the iPod Touch. Hmm, I didn't realize it was that long ago. Is that true? Oh no, no, that's just the iPod. Okay, I was like, first gen. Oh no, 2007, it was 2007. 
Yeah, it was just the original iPod. That was 2001. I was like, wow, okay, that blew my mind. So it was still like three years before iPod did their thing, before Apple did their thing. The DS was awesome. Again, kind of juiced the Game Boy back up because I do feel like it was kind of starting to taper off a little bit after the original Game Boy. Like the original Game Boy was the first shot in the arm. Eventually the DS came out. Whenever the DS came out, it was, I remember everybody wanted a DS. Everybody wanted a DS. Everybody wanted that year. I think I was in like sixth grade. I remember one of the big things with the DS was not only was it portable, Game Boy, whatever, with a touchscreen, but also, do you guys remember that? I think they did a Mario DS, like Super Mario 64 DS and that kind of stuff. So it was the first handheld that had like the 3D, yeah, like 3D capabilities. Now, again, in the same, what is this? Is this a 3DS or a DS Lite? Or I don't know what this is. I don't remember anything standing out or being special and, and specific to the 3DS. It came out in 2011. 2011. Seven years later, there was a period of time that I think Nintendo did things not very well. This came out really during that time. What, the screen is a little bit bigger. Nintendo announced a significant price reduction amid disappointing launch sales. There was no excitement behind this from what I remember. The company offered 10 free NES games and 10 free Game Boy Advance games from the Nintendo eShop to consumers that bought the system at original launch price. The strategy was considered a success. The console went on to become one of the most successful handheld consoles in the first two years of its release. That's good, but on launch, it was expensive. I mean, 250 in 2011, you could get an Xbox 360 for that much. Like, this is a PlayStation. Like, what the hell were they thinking? Even now, how much does a Nintendo Switch cost? Like, like 350, 10 years later. No, a Nintendo Switch with Animal Crossing costs 300, $50 more than this. Now, I will say this, the prices for consoles have not gone up that much since this time in general. Uh, I'm not a fan of 3DS. I think this was trash. Um, I think, it eventually got better, sure. So I would say this is probably a C or maybe even a D. It picked back up after the fact. If it hadn't picked back up, I would say D. Uh, I, I, I might give this a C. I will say there was like a golden age and Nintendo was on the cutting edge of it, man. But I actually did a project on this in, in college where I went through and I researched a lot of this stuff. Gaming took a very big hit uh, in like the mid eighties. Like you had like the Atari, they came in and they were just started kicking ass. They released a bunch of new games. They had the Mario, they had Donkey Kong, they had good peripherals, they had the light gun, they had the power glove, kicking everyone's ass and totally coming in and being like, wait, what the hell is this? This is cool. This is innovative. This is great. Now, I don't actually think this is really what made Nintendo. I think the system that made Nintendo what it is, like what it really established them more than anything else was the Super NES. Better colors, better graphics. You basically took everything that was good about this and you you amped it up. You actually had a multi-tap for this system. And here is why I would go as far as saying, not only did the Super Nintendo set the standard and make Nintendo what it is today, but what they also did was they made PlayStation. Because the reason why PlayStation exists, and you say no, you say question mark, but the history of the PlayStation, if you know this, if you don't know this, listen up, Sony contacted Nintendo and they wanted to work together, they wanted to work together with Nintendo and release a console together where they use CDs. Now, Nintendo, in their infinite wisdom, said, who would ever want to play video games on a disc? <laughs> they were wrong. This is the prototype, the Super Famicom CD-ROM adapter. And it was an unreleased video game peripheral for the SNES that basically Sony wanted to make and they wanted to work with Super Nintendo on this, or they wanted to work with Nintendo on this to add it onto the Super Nintendo to basically be able to put more data into the games and make it better. And they were like, no, this is weird. And now while I do agree, this is weird. This is very weird. Coming out with their own console eventually, which is what this led to. Now, if I'm right, didn't they, didn't they work with like Philips? Does it say this here? And like Philips tried to make a console? Am I making this up? Hold on, Philips CDI. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So I think I think co-developed by Philips and Sony. Okay, I, okay, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the wheels are turning, right? The freaking data storage, the DNA is kicking in my head. This was a huge failure. This sucked. And then Sony still said, you know what? You know what? We can do this. We can just make our own console. Is this real? I don't remember ever seeing this. I guess this is the first version. But look, it's literally a Super Nintendo that says PlayStation on it and Sony <laughs> with a CD drive. It's the same thing. What is this? You got some ports? You got some frick this is audio microphone? I don't know what that is. The PlayStation Zero. Oh, it was the original? It was the original prototype? Oh, really? That's crazy. I'd never actually seen the original prototype. That's nuts. Now, here's what's happening so far. I'm in love with all these consoles, so I'm just giving everything S. <laughs> I'm giving everything S tier. There's so many good things. There's so many good reasons to give all these things S. So, moving on to the N64. Hmm. Oh, man. I don't want to be biased and start like not putting things S on purpose. I think we've got to make some tough calls here and really start to, to, to stretch this list down a little bit. Ooh, do I even drop the Dreamcast? I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm in love with the Dreamcast, but maybe I'm in love with it because it's the underdog. It's like, it's like the forgotten, like, th you know what this guy is? This is like the freaking little engine that could, okay? This is the guy who like, he was an amazing football player in college and then went to the NFL and then just like, he just, he, he blew out his knee or something and then he just sucked. But it wasn't really his fault. That's, that's how I feel about the Dreamcast. It was so far out of its time. I'm putting the Dreamcast at A. Because at the end of the day, it still kind of, it, it failed. But man, man, was it good. Now, next up is the GameCube. I think that the GameCube was the first console where Nintendo really lost its foothold. Because PlayStation 2 and original Xbox came in and they said, hey, we're just bigger, better, stronger. The systems were better. They had these freaking mini discs, which is like, what the hell is this? Didn't really make any sense. Now, where GameCube strength lies, the exclusives, because Nintendo still had the exclusive games that everybody loved. Also, they fixed one of the biggest problems with the N64. The GameCube controller was very good. Very, very good. And the GameCube had really, really good games. Mario Sunshine, Super Smash, Melee, Metroid Prime. The controller is so good that people are still using the game, the GameCube controller today. Because right now I'm leaning towards A and B. Because I think the N64 for its time was better than the GameCube. I'm thinking it's a B. Now the Nintendo Wii, I, I didn't mean to put it D, I was just like throwing it up there. Or as I like to call it, the console for moms trying to work out at home with Wii Fit. I think brought Nintendo back to its roots. I actually feel very strongly about this. In what way? When Nintendo started out, Nintendo was innovative. Now this console, playing games specifically on this console because they had Wii versions of games and non-Wii versions of games, it added value to the game. Now, with that being said, certain games were good on the Wii and certain games were not good on the Wii. The controller was both really good and really trash at the same time. We're gonna go back, okay? We're gonna go back to the drawing board. Here's the CEO of Nintendo himself, Danny DeVito, okay? Said, we're gonna go back to the drawing board and, and we're gonna find out what made Nintendo so good when it first started. Fun, innovative stuff. Good peripherals. It's a family console. I remember my parents thought the Wii was sick. The problem with the Wii, I feel like hardware wise, graphically, whatever you want to call it, it did not match up to where the PS2 and the Xbox were at. I thought it was weak. I thought a lot of the games were not particularly good for the Wii. But what this console did, this and, and I guess the Wii U, right? Wii, 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 Wii. Oh, uh, my bad. I said PS2, didn't I? PS3 and the 360, because we were talking about GameCube earlier. It was the same issue that the GameCube had. It just wasn't there graphically. But what they did was they, they veered off and they went the fun route. And the same thing happened with the Wii that has now happened with the Switch, where there's a lot of people who had a PS2, or sorry, PS3, or an Xbox 360 who also ended up getting a Wii. I don't know how many of you there were, but I remember... Growing up, you had one or the other. Like it was, oh, you had one of the consoles and that's just what you did. 
But this was kind of the first time that I remember actively separating. Like I got a PlayStation 1 on sale. I got a, I got a Dreamcast when it was getting discontinued. Other than that, I was like Nintendo. But the Wii was the first one that I had a, 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 I had an Xbox 360 and I was like, well, we're getting a Wii and we got to play Wii games and it was fun. But I do think it brought it back. I think it, I think it was better than the GameCube. I don't know if it's an S, okay? I wouldn't say it's an S, but really the combination of what we saw with the, the, the Wii U, the DS, and the GameCube leads us to, I think this is a Nintendo Switch. I don't think there's another one. Leads us to the Nintendo Switch, which is absolutely an S. I think the Nintendo Switch is an S because what happened was Nintendo went and they fell from grace. They were beaten, they were battered, they were bruised. Microsoft had taken over them. Sony had taken over them. Skipped Wii U, is this the Wii U? Who gives a damn, Wii U F. I didn't even remember the Wii U existed until I was talking about the Wii. The Wii U can suck my nuts. Okay, the Nintendo Switch has come in and they mastered what the direct, they mastered the direction that Nintendo wanted to turn back to, which is their original direction, which is fun. They have now gotten the Game Boy. They have gotten, they've gotten motion controls. They've got portability. They've got fun. You can hook it up to a TV. You can pick it up and go. The Switch is its own genre. Console wars are kind of done. In 2020, console wars are over, right? Like I, I think that a lot of people there's so many people now that get both PlayStation and Xbox. Some people still try and keep this console wars thing going from like 20 years ago. Eh, it's done, right? Uh, you just, you, 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 it's about the games. Also, just play on PC. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Anyway. <laughs> so, I, I, <laughs> so, and there's a lot of people that have either a, either an Xbox or a PlayStation. And they also have a Switch. And, and that is just their own thing. It is a party system. It is a mobile system. It is, is a handheld system. It is fun. You can, you can have motion controls. You can do everything you could do with all these other consoles. And it takes the best parts of everything that Nintendo brought to the table after they kind of fell from grace and put it into this amazing system. I think the Switch is absolutely an S. They have, they have, they have carved out their own spot in, in the console gaming market, and it is theirs. It is, it is absolutely theirs. People will buy it. People, like, I have a Switch too. It just, I mean, it's downstairs. I'm not playing it actively because I'm always playing games on the computer usually. But that's the same way with all my consoles. Where's PS3? Oh, there it is. I don't act, I actually. Is that a Genesis? I think that's a Sega Genesis. PlayStation One. This is a hard one because we already talked about the origins of the PlayStation One. Sony entered the market because Nintendo said no. They went to go work with Philips, it was garbage. And they said, nah, F Philips. We're gonna make our own console. The reason why I kinda wanna put PlayStation 1 at an A, when they came against all odds and they introduced the CDs, the new medium for games for the next almost 10 years, I mean, very, very memorable games, it was big time. The PlayStation 1 was great. The games were incredible, absolutely incredible games. But the reason why I want to put it in an S, it kind of beats itself, or at A instead of an S, it kind of beats itself because I feel like the PlayStation 2 came in and essentially perfected what the PlayStation 1 did. The PlayStation was like their first shot into the market, really. And then they came in with the PS2 and just freaking dropped the hammer. Perfected Xbox One. PlayStation 3. PlayStation 3 is tough because in a lot of ways, the PS3 was good. Oh, that's true. PS2 could also play DVD. I forgot to mention that. And PS3 could play Blu-ray players or Blu-ray uh, discs. It had a Blu-ray player built in. But good God, was it expensive. And, and the, the backlash on launch, dude. This was a joke of a console of the initial release. PS3 online was trash, wasn't it? It was, there was all, there was always problems with like disconnects and all kinds of stuff. PS3 online was garbage, if I remember right. And it was like, I remember talking to my friends at school about this, where like I had friends who had PS3 and they were talking about, and I'm like, yeah, it's cause like you have to pay. Like they need, they, like the money is like that you pay for Xbox, like it's used for something, right? It's not like they're just taking money for no reason, right? That handles the servers, it handles everything else. I feel like the PS4 came back 
and they were like, they basically fixed all the problems that PS3 had. They had good pricing, a very powerful system, outstanding exclusives, and I think that puts it in an A. Let's go on to Xbox. The Xbox original. I did not have an original Xbox, but I had friends who did. I think the original Xbox had a lot of really good things going for it. It was a powerful system. The very first system that had an onboard hard drive. Am I, am I remembering this wrong? They had onboard memory and no other system had this yet. The interface was fantastic. I don't know what exclusives it had really other than Halo. Like Halo was really what made Xbox. Things that the Xbox did though that were innovative. It mastered online play. It Four controller ports built in so you didn't need to buy a multi-tap. In fact, I would say that was the only real problem that I had with uh, the PS2 was that it didn't have four ports built in. You still had to buy a multi-tap. That was the real only real problem that I, I the, the only problem that I had with PS2. The controller was terrible for the Xbox One, or the, sorry, the original Xbox. This abomination. Do you guys remember this? I was like, how the hell is anybody gonna play a game on this thing? I remember not being able to hit the buttons. Like the, the hell is this? Garbage. Even though it was a very good console, I do think they mastered online play. And I think that the interface and everything from that regard with the Xbox was really, really good. And I think the combination of the PS2 and the Xbox's success came in and that's what really, these two changed the direction of Nintendo for the future. But the Xbox certainly had its problems. And I, I really don't know. It might be a high A or a low S. It's, it's, it is, it is an A plus or an S minus. But yes, the Xbox 360 was better. The Xbox 360, similar to the PS3, same generation. On launch, the 360 was a catastrophe. Red Ring of Death all kinds of console errors. It, it was bad. They, they released multiple versions of this console to try and fix the problems that it came with. It was better than the PS3. And I would even say it's better than the Xbox original by a lot. The interface was beautiful. Online play was great. The blades, yes, dude, the blades. It was great. I will put this at an S. I think the 360 was an S. I think it was incredible. Absolutely incredible system. Correct me if I'm wrong. But do you guys remember whenever Xbox One was announced, didn't they say they didn't even want to have a disk drive? And people were pissed. People were pissed. They wanted to require the Kinect as part of the console. They were making so many bad decisions. Always online, freaking NSA, creepy champ. Like there's all kinds of freaking paranoia with Xbox One. I think that the PS4 took back over and the Xbox One, they cleaned everything up. They eventually were like, okay, yeah, you can have a disc drive. Okay, yeah, you can, uh, you don't need the Kinect. Sure, but like the beginning of the Xbox One was really, really not good. And I think that the Xbox One, I still think it was better than the PS3 for its time. Yeah, I think it was better than the PS3 for its time, but I don't think it was as good as the PS4. I think the PS4 beat it out. And I think that the beginning of Xbox 360 was so bad that I might I might knock it down to an A. I do think Xbox 360 beat out PS3, but I'm thinking about it more and more. And like just, they had so many errors on launch, but it did so many things right. I think it was just really ambitious. And then they blew it. The PSP, I feel like the PSP was, that was Sony again, trying to go back in and trying to copy Nintendo again, right? The PSP was good. And it was a, uh, let me see the release date of the PSP. 2005, okay, that's, that's what I thought. I thought it was like similar, similar to the DS. Here's what made PSP good. Nintendo was iPhone and PSP was Android. That's what it was. The Game Boy was iPhone and the PSP was Android. That's the best way that I can describe it. And what do I mean by that? Nintendo was its own thing. There wasn't really any modding. People go and they, they mess around with their Android phones and there's way more customization than they do, all that kind of stuff. I think that the PSP goes and it allows for some good things there, but also I don't think there was a lot of really good games for the PSP that were exclusive. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's not a whole lot of stuff that just comes to mind. There's a few. God of War, Uncharted, Burnout, GTA. These were all games on the on the main consoles. But I'm thinking of Crisis Core, that's the first one. I think that the PSP is very good and it kind of did its own thing and it was like supplementary 
to the PlayStation. I don't think it's an S and I don't think it's a B necessarily. One thing I didn't like about the PSP was I did not like how, if I remember this correctly, didn't it need its own memory, which was the Sony brand, like they wouldn't take SanDisk cards and Sony made their own type of memory and they were kind of trying to do the Apple thing where Apple tries to make everything theirs and you're in their ecosystem. And, and, uh, that was the Vita that they did that? Okay, yeah, 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 the Vita was trash. I think the PSP is a hard A. I don't know how anybody could play this thing without getting a headache. How could anybody in their right mind play this game without getting a massive headache? Is this true? It gave people seizures? Virtual Boy seizures. Is that true? CD Bork donated $3 where the end gauge at. Nausea Run. and she seizures while playing. Yeah. So while the Virtual Boy, it was innovative and it was cool and it was like, hey, it's a great idea, but it was just ugh, not good. I mean, like, look, it's like an old school, it's like a VR headset. I mean, that's, that's what they were trying to do is like they were trying to do what VR is today. And even VR today has a lot of problems. It was way out of its time. Well, it was not only ahead of its time, it was also, it was also bad. <laughs> like, it was terrible. I will only give it an E because I think it was it was ambitious. Okay, I don't know what all these are. This is a Genesis. Is this an Atari? Oh, Game Gear. Is this an N-Gage? Oh, Neo Geo. Neo Geo Pocket Color. Neo Geo, that's what this is. Oh, that's a Sega Nomad. Okay, all these are F. All this is garbage. Yeah, because I don't want to do it. Actually, Sega Genesis was really good. Sega Genesis was like, it, Sega Genesis was good. Oh, Sega Genesis was good. The Genesis was good. Everything else sucks. Sega Saturn, was Sega Saturn used a CD? I never played any of these ones, but Sega Genesis was so good. But yeah, I think this order is pretty good. I think this order is pretty good. I'll put the Vita down here. Hey, this is my video game ranking tier list.